Okay, welcome back, everybody. This is your first podcast. It's podcast 7.1, Taxonomy and Nomenclature. Um, Ms. Shackleton, Coach Burnett, we're going to be going over this one with you guys. Um, it's our brand new unit on um, classification and taxonomy, and this specific podcast is going to be on classifying living things. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's do start with a definition of taxonomy. It is the science of classifying living things. Groups show evolutionary relationships. Now, often there's a myth that only plants and animals are living things, but that's not actually the case. The truth is that living organisms include prokaryotic, stuff like bacteria, and eukaryotic organisms. All right, there is an importance to the standardized system that we call taxonomy. Um, it is a worldwide consistency, therefore all scientists are using the same thing. Um, it's kind of like the scientific method just to keep things um, consistent throughout um, the world. So all scientists classify things based on similarities and differences. Um, organisms internal and external structure are um, used to classify these things as well as development and also DNA sequencing. Okay, so in taxonomy, there's a taxonomic hierarchy, which just means an order that everything goes in. Okay, so the first one is going to be kingdom. So it's going to go from the most broad to the most specific. So kingdom means that it's going to be the broadest group or the broadest category. Number two is phylum. Phyla is the plural form of that word. Number three is going to be class. Four is going to be order. Five is family. Six is genus, genre is the plural form of that word, and seven is species. The same species, remember, is organisms that are able to interbreed with each other to produce fertile offspring, okay? Producing fertile offspring is the important part to remember in the same species. All right, um, a little hint, a little acronym for you. Um, you can come up with your own if you'd like, but King Philip came over for good steak. The K is for kingdom, P is for phylum, C for class, O for order, F for family, G for genus, S for species. So like I said, come up with your own if you'd like, or remember this one so you'll know its order. Remember, K for kingdom is your most broad, S for species is going to be your more specific. Okay, so here are a couple of examples. These are fun. There are just different examples of animals that were able to interbreed because they have the same number of chromosomes, sterile meaning um, able to reproduce themselves. So we have a zebroid, which is sterile, which means it cannot reproduce, but it was produced by a horse and a zebra mating who do not belong in the same species. Another example of this is a camma. Um, it's a baby animal also sterile, which means it cannot reproduce. It was formed by the uh, mating of a camel and a llama, which do not belong to the same species. And the third is a liger. Yes, they do actually exist, um, although they are sterile. They cannot reproduce, but they are formed by a lion and a tiger reproducing together, and a lion and a tiger do not belong to the same species. All right, here is our classification of a human. Um, us as humans belong to the kingdom Animalia. We have a phylum, Chordata. The class is Mammalia. You've also heard of mammals. Yes, that's where the uh, mammals come from is our class. Um, our order is primates. Family is Hominidae. Genus is Homo. And our species is Sapiens. You've heard of humans referred to as Homo sapiens before. Um, notice that HOMO is capitalized, SAPIENS is lowercase, and they're both italicized. There is reason behind that. Okay, so in that example for humans, our scientific name was HOMO SAPIEN. Okay, so let's talk about what a scientific name is made up of. Uh, number one, it's a unique two-word Latin name assigned to each organism. Uh, two different species will never have the same scientific name. All right, Carl Linus, he developed the two-word system, which we call binomial nomenclature. You want to remember that, binomial nomenclature. Um, and this was in the mid-1700s. Okay, so 
like Coach Burnett said, both words are going to be in italics or underlined. Okay, so that's kind of the option. If they're underlined, they don't need to be in italics. If they're in italics, they don't need to be underlined. Italics, remember, is that little slanted lettering. Um, and the first word is going to be the genus name, which will always be capitalized. The second word is going to be the species name, which will also always be lowercase. So those are like the general rules for scientific name. Okay, here's some examples. You can see these are underlined instead of being in italics. For horse, it's Acus caballus. And for zebra, we've got Acus burselli. Um, take a second, you can see they do have the same uh, genus, but not the same species. So they are closely related. So everything above um, genus, all the way up to kingdom, are gonna be exactly the same. So any, any of the taxa above genus will be the same. Their species are obviously different, but this also tells us that it is closely related. The hemlock tree, Suga canadensis, and the Canadian goose, Ranta canadensis. They have the same species name, but different genus. Therefore, they are not closely related. All right, and then we have a jellyfish and a starfish. The jellyfish is Cyanea artica, the starfish is Tinodiscus australis. So you can see they do have similar common name, but they're not closely related because their scientific name in the binomial nomenclature is not closely related at all. Okay, so that is the uh, conclusion of this first podcast. Remember, if you didn't get a chance to take notes the first time through, go ahead and replay it and jot your notes down because you will need to be showing those to us in class. So have a great day. We'll see you in class.